If your smartphone budget is under 200 quid, do not despair. These days you can actually get a pretty good selection for that sub 200 pound asking price. You certainly don't have to get something that would function better as a doorstop than a mobile phone. And in the realm of budget blows, our great mate Motorola is still one of the reigning champions, although it is facing tougher and tougher competitions from rival manufacturers like Xiaomi and Realme. And it is a matter that's been further confused by the fact that Motorola seems to be launching a new phone every couple of minutes. So this right here is the Moto G8, a 180 pound mobile offering competitive specs for a low price although it is also one of four new Moto G series smartphones to hit the UK in just the past few months. If you don't want to resort to the super cheapy Moto 8 series smartphones then the Moto G8 is one of the cheapest Motorola blows that you could buy right now in 2020. I've had my sim slapped in there for a good few days now and here's my full review and also if you're a bit confused by all the Moto G8 series smartphones there are quite a few of them I've done an in detail comparison between them all in a separate video so go check that out. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, as far as the design goes, Motorola hasn't chucked in any particular frills or surprises here. The Moto G8 is a plastic fantastic handset with your standard glossy finish, available in either this standard blue hue or a spot of white instead. Thankfully, the blue model does an okayish job of hiding those grim, greasy fingerprints, but you'll definitely want to give it one of these every so often just to be sure. It's not too surprising after just a week to see a few light nicks appearing on that plastic surface as well, and slightly more worryingly on the actual display itself. Motorola does throw in one of these cheapy cases to kind of limit the damage but you'll definitely want to slap on your own screen protector as well. In better news though the Moto G8 is at least water repellent so you're all right for checking your Instagrams in the rain. Now while some budget handsets are still languishing on the old Android 9 including some of Motorola's more recent efforts thankfully here on the Moto G8 it is a pleasingly stock version of Android 10. This comes complete with all of those great features like a proper dock mode and gesture navigation while the Moto Experiences app also adds in some essential extras like a one-handed mode. The Moto G8 may be relatively compact at just 6.4 inches but those chunky bezels do add a fair bit of bulk and if you've got stumpy little digits like me you'll definitely need all the help you can get. And while there's no face recognition that rear physical fingerprint sensor does work a charm. It's not exactly instant but it rarely fails. Like most Motorola phones however I'm expecting the G8 to be rather slow as far as updates go despite that stock Android finish but hopefully I'll be proven wrong on that front. Sadly though there's no NFC support here so no contactless payments and it's also single band Wi-Fi as well as no 5 gigahertz support although personally I didn't experience any issues when streaming HD video or playing games like PUBG. That 6.4 inch IPS screen is certainly sizable enough for enjoying games and shows although it's only a 720p panel. If you want a proper full HD display you'll have to bump up your budget a bit for the G8 Power or Plus or look to rivals like the Redmi Note instead. All the same I found that that resolution was absolutely fine for reading smaller text and it also certainly did not result in poor video quality either. Visuals definitely aren't grainy or fuzzy although vivid colours don't exactly dazzle even on that saturated display mode and brightness levels are just about good enough to clearly see what you're up to when you're sat outside on a sunshiny day. It's a bit of a mixed bag on the audio front however, there's a single mono speaker housed down here on the bottom edge and no support for Dolby audio or anything like that. It's a far cry from the stereo speaker setup found on the G8 Power and Plus. However, you do get a proper bit of Bluetooth 5 support and I had absolutely no problems whatsoever streaming audio to a stereo speaker setup or a pair of headphones, anything like that. And you even get a bit of headphone jack action up top if you want a proper wide connection. Now power in the Moto G8 is the Snapdragon 665 platform, a common choice for these more affordable blowers and it's backed here by respectable 4 gigs of RAM. On the whole it's a pretty dependable setup, you will occasionally be left hanging while the Moto G8 tries to catch up a little bit, generally I found when using the camera tech but apart from that it's absolutely fine. You can even indulge in a spot of light game and PUBG Mobile for instance plays out alright as long as you keep it on that low detail setting. It's not the smoothest experience ever but it is about as good as you'll get around this sort of price point and it's certainly pretty Playable. Even this here fingered player managed to make it to the final 10 more often than not. As a help in hand you also get the new Moto Game Time app pre-installed on the Moto G8 which can block notifications and keep your focus on the game. It is quite basic compared with rival offerings from the likes of Oppo and Realme but it'll do the job just fine. Though I did also notice that the call blocking the calls would actually still ring out loud it just wouldn't pop up a notification on your screen so it's still a little bit distracting. On the battery life tip that 4000 milliamp cell delivered a full day of use every single time even with a bit of Skype or gaming action thrown in. Quite often I did manage to make to bed with around 20% battery life remaining although on some of those more intensive days where there was a lot of Skyping especially involved then definitely I was just about hanging on 
come bedtime. So if you're the kind of person who's never off their smartphone, you might be better off with a 5,000 milliamp smartphone like uh, the Oppo A9 2020 or the Moto G8 Power. Or even the good old Realme 6i, which I only just unboxed, so go check that out. And you also get a reasonably generous 64 gigs of storage stuffed inside the Moto G8 as well. But if you do find you fill that up, you can always expand with a micro SD memory card up to a whopping 512 further gigs. So basically sorted. Now last up is the camera tech and here you get a triple lens rear setup. Although you get a two megapixel macro lens as one of them and that's pretty pointless as usual capturing low res blurry shots nine times out of ten. Thankfully the 16 megapixel primary lens is reasonably respectable for a budget blower capturing a fair amount of detail. It's not too bad for those high dynamic range pics although you will definitely see some oversaturation when you're shooting in brighter conditions. The portrait mode can occasionally be a wee bit janky with the edge detection too but it usually serves up slick looking pics. And you've got Motorola's usual AI features on board, including that smart composition which can crop in towards your subject and straighten them up. Things can look a bit soft and murky when you're shooting indoors at times, and there's also no night mode on here, unlike the G8 Plus. But the standard G8 can do okay in low light, colours look pretty weak, but the detail levels aren't too bad unless things get proper dark. And it's also great to have a wide angle option for your photos as well, unlike some of the other G series blowers. As for video recording, well that tops off at 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, pretty much standard for a £200-ish handset in 2020. Colour capture is certainly vibrant and you can shoot footage using the standard or wide angle lenses, although you can't swap between the two on the fly. That focus can struggle at times with moving subjects, but audio capture is pleasingly clear as long as it's not blowing a gale or anything. Basically, the Moto G8 is fine for simple home movies as long as you avoid dodgy lighting and your subject isn't too hyperactive. And you've also got a perfectly competent 8 megapixel front facing camera for grabbing some selfies to share on the Instagrams. If you shoot against a bright background, it will be completely washed out, but your face stays sharp with decent lighting. And you've also got all of those usual jazzy portrait mode effects to play around with. Once again, the results can be varied, but usually tilts towards the good end of the spectrum. And the front facing camera here on the Moto G8 can also shoot at full HD resolution as well as you kind of expect. And it does struggle a little bit in HDR situations, but it does a perfectly fine job, pretty much uh, bang on for a budget smartphone. So that in a nutshell is what I think of the Motorola Moto G8 after using it for a few days as my full time personal smartphone. As you can see, it doesn't really do anything at all to stand out from the Oppos, the Realmes, the Xiaomis of the world. If your budget is around that sort of £200 price point, you can certainly find smartphones out there with a full HD display with NFC support and so on and so on. But you know what? The Moto G8 is perfectly inoffensive as well. It didn't piss me off once in the entire time I was using it, so that's a bonus. But anyhow, that is what I think. What do you think? Definitely be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you are in the market for a budget smartphone, I've done lots of best budget phone roundups in 2020, sub £200, sub £300 and so on, including of course I've done a best Motorola phone roundup as well. So plenty of other videos to go and digest and probably just confuse you more, but hey, give them a go. Give them a like, give them a subscribe, all of that shenanigans would be very much appreciated indeed. Thanks to everyone. Love you.